There's no need to readjust the TV or computer screens. This is not an error. Continuing on with what I call Whiskey Christmas, or which is the new whiskey releases season. I'm not even sure that's a, th a thing. I might have just created something there. Something a little special from one of Ireland's oldest whiskey distilleries. And the world's oldest licensed distillery. Let's drink some whiskeys. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm the Whiskey Chaser Brian here in Chrissy's Bar Kilkenny. It's been a while since we sampled two different whiskeys on the channel. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get stuck in. I hope your week has been good, by the way. Not one, but two brand new Irish exclusive releases from the Bushmill Distillery. And I generally had no idea this was coming, but it is the season for new Irish whiskey releases, and it was a nice surprise, in fairness. This right here is the 1995 Marsala Cast finished single malt whiskey. And the 2011 Sauternes or Sauternes Cast finished single malt Irish whiskey from the Bushmills Distillery. Late last year on the channel, when the channel was in its early days, I had the very new and delicious Causeway whiskeys on the channel from Bushmills. I did the video facing this way. You might remember that. That was the 95 and 08 versions slash releases. I covered a ton of information on the Bushmills distillery then, so I'm going to link, the, link it to the above video and you can watch that one in your own time. But check it out. It's a good watch. Still, a lot of the information holds true to today's video. It has only been 11 months. I said in such video that for a number of years in Ireland, Bushmills has really kind of been considered the sleeping giant of Irish whiskey. I mean, sure, there has been some airport exclusive releases, single cask releases for other various societies or retailers, not in Ireland, distillery exclusives and whatnot, but it's been a relatively small amount of going on from one of Ireland's oldest distilleries and the world's oldest licensed distillery. Enter the Causeway collection in 2020 and boom. Literal liquid lava in the form of Irish whiskey poured out from the distillery. There was Irish releases, I'm not sure, but there could have been an American release, a French release. I'm not an avid collector of Bushmills whiskey normally, but if I buy it, I drink it, and I don't really chase the whiskey down, but I understand there was also an Asia release too, if I'm not mistaken. But if you know anything about that, I'm not a Bushmills collector, drop me a comment below and maybe clarify that for me, thanks. But yeah, we basically had Bushmills whiskey coming out of everywhere, and it was akin to the Mount Vesuvius eruptions. People ran, cried, phone bills went through the roof, delivery companies and couriers were busy for weeks with no sign of sleep or rest. Auction sites were hoarded with bottles of Bushmills from every corner of the globe. The sleeping giant was awoken, and he was sharing his goodies with the world. To sum up, there was an awful lot of bottles released worldwide, and people went crazy trying to get them all together, except for me. I was quite happy to try the 08 Muscatel and the 95 Malaga single cask releases here, and they were nothing short of fantastic. Bushmills do great things. I've said it before. So we take a jump 11 odd months later, and we have the new 2021 Causeway releases. Two brand new Irish only expressions from Bushmills. I also read that there will be a whiskey release for a whopping eight different markets worldwide. And at the time of recording this video, there was a very sneaky picture revealed at Whiskey Lie Paris for a 32 year old port finished Causeway release for La Maison du Whiskey. That's all the info I have, except that there were 228 bottles of that. Saw it on the label. Good luck to all those trying to chase them down. So jumping back to these two beauties, and I'm seriously excited for this. I love Marsala finished whiskeys. It's a beautiful fortified wine. And a whiskey, any whiskey that's been finished in it, I've been a huge fan of. And there's been a few. Some from Walsh Whiskey, Irish Distillers, and others, of course. Uh, we also have the Sartonese Cast finished too, which is interesting. 
Sauternes is a region in Bordeaux that produces this sweet wine. And to date, anything I've had with Sauternes finish or Sauternes um, has been from the Teeling Distillery. I don't normally see too many of them in the wild, to be honest. Sauternes finish whiskeys. Me, Irish. As with all of my tastings, I'll give the breakdowns of each before trying. I'll give you my notes and then obviously what I think of them from an enthusiast perspective. These bottles were provided to me from the bar here and they are obviously available here by the dram. As is all the whiskeys I drink basically here. If you appreciate the finer whiskeys in life, be sure to subscribe, like, and share this video to friends and family and whiskey lovers around the world. Turn the notifications on so you don't miss a video uploaded every Wednesday at 5.15 Irish time. Just dawned on me. But you always have to make a stupid face when you're trying to open a bottle of whiskey. And we pour the 2011 Sauternes. And I spilled some. The 2011 Sauternes cask uh, was first aged for over seven years in Olorosa Sherry Butts and Bourbon barrels, and then in uh, rare Sauternes wine cask for two years. And I've read online that this is the first time that Bushmills have used this type of cask for finishing. And the two years finish time in the Sauternes cask is seemingly unprecedented. They don't do it for now. I don't know much about that side of things, but. Anyway, this is a non-chill filtered 56.3% ABV single malt. That is extremely limited. I have no idea of release size as they kept that very, very quiet. Obviously triple distilled, no idea if there is coloring this. It is a possibility, only released for the island of Ireland and this one for a price point of 110 euros. I've given it a little bit of a chance to breathe. I'm gonna give my notes. Oh. On the nose, undeniably Bushmills, but the first thing that stands out to me is like a pear. Very, to me, forward. There is a very much kind of sweetness at the front of this before you hit the pear, and it's incredible. It's very fruity forward. That sweetness is very fruity. It's transitioning then the whole way as it kind of opens up a little bit more. You know, you're obviously getting your, your vanilla. That pear note just sticks out so much to me. And a hell of a lot of sweetness. And there's a, a little bit of a dark note in there, kind of. It could be the cask. I'm not overly familiar with Sauternes or Sauternes um, finished whiskeys. Tiny bit of nuttiness towards the end, little bit of spirit coming through, which, or that, uh, not spirit, sorry, excuse me, uh, spice. Not overly spicy, doesn't come across as a spice bomb by any means, but very fruity. The pear stands out the most for me. It's stuck in my head. I can't really get past that, but very sweet from the fruits. Um, that Bushmills note behind it, the single malt. Oh, interesting. Okay, that opened up a little bit more there. A little bit more of the nuttiness now, almost like a creme brulee at the end. And spice. Lovely, I'm looking forward to this. I'm a huge fan of single malt. Let's launch it. Now, there's a lot of spice coming through that. Uh, straight away. You're also getting your fruit notes. Um, more so, the spice kind of hits me first. That's definitely lingering a nice bit. You have, of course, your vanilla, your sweet notes from the fruity uh, parts to the malt. Quite nice. Another one, it's not yet. There's a wooded note there on the palate. Just came at the end there. There's vanilla, there's caramel, there's wooded notes. There's nutty notes. There's a niceness to that actually on the palate, nice finish. A sweetness, a woodiness, and the spice still hanging around. A nice bit actually. That's a, that's a great dram. For the price point, one 10 year olds for what? A 10 year old Bushmills finished in Sauternes or Sauternes, whatever you want to call it. There's not a little drop left here, Snatcha. Yeah, undeniably Bushmills. 
the, you know, you're getting the fruity notes from the casks, uh, the sweetness from the cask, the fruity notes from the single malt. Um, you're getting the nutty notes from the wood. And this is kind of hanging around and dancing across the palate a little bit, you know, you have your spice, you have your sweetness. A little bit on the dry side, we'll say that. Touch, very slight, um, which I think that could be possible from the, the Sauternes cask. I'm not entirely sure. Enjoyable. That's, you'd sit down with that, you'd drink it. Not incredibly complex, but robust. Lots of, of those flavors that are there are very much there. Um, and it's kind of simple in that nature, but strong flavors, if that makes sense. And why wouldn't it? Of course it makes sense. And now we should try its much older brother, the 95 Marsala. Let's make some stupid faces and open this whiskey. can't help but make a stupid face when you're opening a bottle of whiskey. I don't know. And we pour without trying, without spilling it this time. The 95 Marsala cask has matured for over 10 years in Oloroso sherry butts and bourbon barrels before being aged in Marsala casks that were sourced from the island of Sicily, obviously Marsala, Sicily, for 15 years. Again, the 15 years of Marsala is seemingly unprecedented. Uh, this is non-chill filtered, 57.8% ABV single malt that is again extremely limited and no definite numbers of bottles was provided to me. Again with the last one, triple distilled. Not sure on coloring, but uh, only on the island of Ireland is this release. And I do recall the 95 Malaga cask being a beauty of a whiskey when I drank it at the time of trying. So I know full well that I'm in for a treat. This is priced at a healthy 410 euro. Wow. So I've given a little bit of a chance to breathe a touch. And if this is, if the 95 Malaga cask is anything to go by, I'm in for a serious treat here. So 95 Marsala, <sighs> single malt. I'm excited, I will admit that. Right, on the nose. Wow. It's so robust. It's so, it smells like syrup, almost like when you open a cap to, um, like I know it's maple syrup, but you know you get that rich syrupy nose that pops through immediately when you smell syrup. Except it's Marsala. It's dried fruits. It's caramel. It's a little bit of those fruity notes from the Bushmills to, uh, that, that is typical. Um, what I find to be, you know, uh, peach or pear and apple, kind of not so much the apple, but more so the, the pear. Huge influence from the wood. I don't find that very spicy. Uh, there's a touch of spice there in the background. It's hugely complex. Obviously, you're going to get that with uh, this age statement and this type of finish. Nutty notes, wooded notes. Uh, that is beautiful. That is incredible. How I words. It's so good. I could literally, I could probably stay here all day nosing this. I can't because of time. Oh my God, it's amazing. I have to try it. Let's launch it. Mother of God. Wow, there's so much going on here. How do you do this justice? Like, the Marsala has a huge influence on it. Obviously you're getting those sweet notes from the Marsala. You're getting a lot of the brown sugar, the toasted nuts, what I call toasted nuts anyway. Um, you're getting the dried fruits, and then the sweetness. It's thick, it's creamy, it's dense, it's juicy. It's aged, you know straight away that it has character. It's got tannins, it's got bite. The spice, not crazy, nice. Uh, it's a meal, it's, a, it's an actual meal in a glass. Let's launch it. Mother of God. 
your malted, malted notes is coming through as well. You have sherry notes of, you know, your, your dried fruits and, and bits and pieces like that. Your, you know, that kind of nuttiness. And, but then your Marsala cask influence is just so robust. It's so juicy. It's, it's, there's dark notes in there of, you know, like I said, the sugar and their caramelized, caramel and brown sugar. Um, on the finish then, it's just evolving. There's so much happening. There is so much happening on that. A little bit of spice on the lips and the back of the tongue. Um, it's coated the, the, the palate lovely. You're, again, your nuttiness subsides. I'm getting a lot more of the sweetness from the Marsala. The wood influence is definitely there. Uh, that's a little bit on the forward side of things. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. There's nothing else but wonderful. Okay, so obviously I have to give you my thoughts on this. Um, first of all, the 2011 Causeway, Causeway delicious, uh, very fruit forward, that kind of sweetness to it. Lovely dram for 110 euros. Lovely, lovely dram. Um, it's got, you know, not overly complex, but what flavors it does have, quite robust, quite in your face. Easy drinker, I would say. If you know you like a mildly spicy, full flavored Bushmills for 110 euro, you can't go wrong with that. No way can you go wrong with that. Lovely. Move across then to the 95 Causeway. There's nothing I can say that it's absolutely gorgeous. It's, of course it is. Absolutely gorgeous, robust, complex, long lasting, fruity. I mean, what, what more can you say? The Marsala cast does a, a fantastic job of bringing out some really lovely deep notes. Um, so well balanced as well. 410 euro, I know, I know that's a lot of money for a bottle of whiskey. And uh, these are exclusive to Ireland. These are rare. Well, you gotta try it though. I mean, when you, when you crack that open and you see just how fruity, how robust, how delicious it is. Uh, I dare I say you nearly save up for another bottle. I'm putting this on my Christmas list. That's how good I like that now. I actually like both of these. I would take both of these. Just saying, either one. And if you would like to sponsor me one of these bottles, by all means, my information and my emails are down below. Reach out. I'd gladly take one off your hands. There's no problem there. No problem. No problem. I love Bushmills. I love their single malts. They're fantastic. Bushmills are pretty much the king of single malts. You know this. I mean, the stuff that they brought out last year, and I've only tried a few, a handful of the uh, 2020 Causeway collection. I didn't go mental on it. I didn't try a, a whole ton of them. I had three or four, I think. I can't even remember now off the top of my head because I wasn't planning to say this, but uh, what I tried, I thought was beautiful. How could you not? Uh, just, it's great to see this kind of output from the distillery um, with this type of variation. I mean, I can understand people might have it a small issue with saying, well, last year was the 95 Malaga and the 08 Muscatel, and this year is the 95 Marsala and the 2011 Sauternes or Sauternes. But get over it. Try them. Try them. That's all I'm saying. I leave it at that. I leave it at that. That's all I'm going to say. Beautiful. So shout out to the lads here in Christie's and many thanks for these exceptional drams today. As always, all thoughts are my own and I'm not influenced by any outside parties. I'm a Bushmills fanboy. Now, as I said in the last couple of videos that I did, this is a time for new releases. So keep an eye on the channel because there will be a lot of those new releases coming soon. Again, make sure you are subscribed. You don't want to miss out. Trust me, lots of stuff coming. And I keep saying that, but it's true. That's it for me. I'm done. I'll see you all next time. Chase her out. Slanja.